the TCU Horned Frogs. Now, my buddy Parker, uh, he's got way more thoughts on this league and this team specifically than I do, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my my ideas on this. I I like Sonny Dykes, right? I, I, think, uh, I think he can be a good coach, but I think there is a ceiling to what you can accomplish with him as a coach. Uh, we'll talk about what this team did last year. They were five and seven overall, three and six in the conference. Their postgame win expectancy was actually five point eight three and six point one seven. So uh, closer to six and six than they were five and seven. Really, they were awful against the spread, two nine and one. But this team returns a ton. I mean, just an absolute metric ton. Seventy nine percent returning production. That's number eight in the country. Eighty six percent returning production on offense. That's number six. Defense returns 73%. That's number 29. Uh, they, they've they done well. Roster strength is okay. Number 41 overall. That's our buddies at CFB Winning Edge. Let's talk about the offense first. Offense last year for TCU was really good. Number 13 in PPA per drive. Uh, number 56 in rushing success rate. Obviously, you got running backs that are gone now, but regardless, uh, you do have guys that came in. Number 41 in passing success rate. Number 6 in offensive explosive play rate. Part of that is because their total plays per game is number 111. So every time you did have an explosive play, it obviously counted more considering you're running less plays. But I digress. Sonny Dykes and the offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley, uh, he was SMU's offensive coordinator, and also Lincoln's little brother. They were number 25 in offensive plays per game at SMU. TCU was number 90. And the difference there is 73.1 offensive plays per game on average, to 67.7 offensive plays per game. Like, it, it's a vast difference. If TCU had run, at, let's say, six more plays per game last year to, to equal up to about what SMU was doing, how many more points could you score with Max Duggan and Quentin Johnson and all that bunch? Right? I mean, that's... If you moved with a little bit more pace, would you have been able to score more points? Uh, this is already a good offense to work with. Like, a, the number six in explosive play rate. Uh, offensive line was iffy, though. They returned three starters on that offensive line. Quarterbacks Duggan and Morris are back, along with the wide receivers Quentin Johnson, Barber, and Brown. Uh, ULL, well, let's call them Louisiana so nobody gets mad. Louisiana running back Imani Bailey and Florida State's Corey Wren transfer in as the running backs. They'll be able to... You're not going to see a ton of them, I would imagine. I think that there's other guys that'll be able to play as well. But I do think... That's a lie. That's an absolute flat-out lie, and I apologize. You're going to see a lot of them. And SMU, while you would think that they pass the ball just a ton, uh, they are able to run the ball as well. I mean, they ran it on... SMU was able to run on TCU last year. I wouldn't imagine that Sonny Dykes and Garrett Riley do a whole lot different as far as that's concerned. On defense, there's only one question. Like, how did this get so bad under Gary Patterson? I just... I have no idea. Um... The new D.C., Joe Gillespie, he did work wonders at Tulsa. Uh, this defense was bad at everything, though, last year. Number 118 in passing PPA allowed. Uh, number 121 in rushing PPA allowed. Uh, number 124 in points per scoring opportunity. So when they did let somebody get down in scoring range, they couldn't stop them at all. Number 117 in overall success. I mean, it was just bad all around. They brought in eight transfers on defense, and they're going to need every last one of them. There's talent at linebacker and defensive back. Defensive line is going to need development. Uh, But I I fully expect that Gillespie will be able to do that. He did it at Tulsa over and over again with guys that you just had no idea who they were until they developed into NFL guys, right? Uh, Will the offensive plays change? uh, will, Will it hurt more on defense, right? That's... It, we always see this when when you start running more plays, does the defense get a little more gassed easily, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it's going to be a, a big shift for this team because you're going from a team that didn't run a lot of plays to a team that is going to run a lot of plays, which is also going to play on your defense. So I'm curious about that. Um, you know, Gillespie, I don't know. He was able to develop guys that nobody knew about when Tulsa ran a lot of plays as well for Philip Montgomery. Um, let's talk about the the keys to the season first. Uh, you got to figure out which quarterback is going to be your starter. How much will the change with the offense, um, or how much will change with the offense when they start running more plays? Because you know that's going to happen. Uh, defense, key to the whole season. 
Like the only way they can be good is if they're able to stop somebody. Like they'll be able to score points, but they were able to score points last year. I mean, bottom line, you got to be able to stop somebody. Uh, I, my biggest, my biggest hire for this bunch was Gillespie from Tulsa. Bottom line, uh, biggest thing here is going to be getting back to the basics, fundamentals, absolute key. Number eighty-five in turnover margin, number one hundred six in penalties per game. Like they're going to have to be better at those things, big time this year. Uh, they're projected favorites in seven games. This is where we get to the schedule. They've got nine toss-ups, which are games that are expected to be decided by one score or less. Nine games by one score. I mean, that's just bananas. Just bananas. The win total sits at six and a half. The over is juiced at minus one twenty-five. Uh, look to win the conference. 14-1, to one, like they've got talent. They obviously can score. If you think Gillespie can fix the defense, you know, plus 1,400, pretty decent odds for somebody to win the conference considering this is kind of a crapshoot anyway. But, I mean, I've got TCU going 7-5. and five. That's, that's, I've got them going over, but I'm still very much wait and see as far as this bunch is concerned. I've got a loss to Oklahoma, a loss to Kansas State, West Virginia, Texas Tech, and a loss to Baylor. That means I've got them beating Texas, beating Iowa State, beating Oklahoma State, uh, winning at SMU. Like, I think I think this team could be good. They've got all the offensive talent in the world. But I'm, I'm curious. I'm just very curious. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.